this is a video about the front and rear wheels I built for my uh, project Bromoloft, the Roloff 14-speed uh, uh, Brompton with disc brakes. I will start with a little bit of background information on building the uh, Roloff wheel. Uh, when building this Roloff wheel, uh, we are replacing the original Brompton wheel. And here it is, the Sturmy Archer uh, Brompton rear wheel from a six-speed Brompton. Uh, we widened the rear triangle and we're using a wider hub. We're also using a larger hub. But the Brompton's uh, original um, wheel uh, that I'm removing uh, has many of the same challenges. Uh, the uh, Sturmy Archer hub is of relatively large diameter. Uh, and the rim is, of course, the same small 16-inch uh, rim. Uh, and this is a fantastic wheel uh, from the wheel building standpoint. Uh, some people might not love the Sturmy Archer hub, but in terms of how this wheel is built, um, uh, I really have uh, no complaints and actually uh, quite admire Brompton uh, because this is a special rim uh, that Brompton makes for this application with angle drilling. And if you keep watching, you will um, uh, see me discuss this angle drilling and its uh, advantage later on. And so why uh, can't we use this rim uh, for a roll-off wheel? Uh, well, that's because all Brompton rims are drilled uh, for 28 spokes and uh, roll-off hubs come either with 32 or 36 uh, spoke drilling. And so uh, when building a roll-off wheel uh, for a 16-inch bicycle such as a Brompton, uh, we um, can't use the Brompton rim, uh, which is uh, very, very unfortunate. I wish a Brompton rim, a rim like this, uh, with a special angle drilling uh, existed um, uh, with 32 holes, but it doesn't. Uh, so we have to use generic rims uh, that were designed uh, for conventional hubs instead of this huge roll of hub. So uh, let me grab a piece of paper to illustrate uh, these issues. So uh, we have our 16 inch rim uh, and in the middle of the rim uh, let me draw a conventional hub. And by conventional, I just mean it's small. It's like your, your regular bicycle hub. Uh, so what are your uh, wheel design options? Well, you could spoke it uh, radially, like um, the original Brompton uh, front wheel. Uh, radial spokes uh, are just as good as uh, tangential spokes at supporting the bicycle weight. Uh, however, uh, there are disadvantages to radial spoking uh, when you start applying torque loads, um, when you start twisting the hub inside the wheel uh, by, by pedaling and, and pulling it with a chain. And of course you twist it in the opposite direction when you use a disc brake. A radial wheel uh, has to become distorted uh, to transmit torque. Um, so it twists, it twists ever so slightly and it becomes uh, slightly non-radial uh, so that uh, the spokes can pull the rim and push the rim. And this cycle of twisting and untwisting and distorting and undistorting uh, leads to a premature wheel failure. Um, so to, to overcome this problem, uh, most bicycle wheels, particularly the rear wheels, are tangentially spoked. So uh, you have the hub, you have the rim, and spoke, spokes run uh, like this. They don't come out of the radius. And so a spoke like this, when there is a torque load applied, uh, can uh, act as a pulling spoke here, or as it can ask, act as a pushing spoke uh, here, and effectively uh, transmit torque. And when your bicycle wheel has ordinary proportions, um, um, 
this works great and we have various tangential lacings like three cross and uh, two cross and even four cross uh, but we do run into issues when the hubs get large so this would be an exaggerated representation uh, representation of the uh, roll-off hub so when the hubs get large um, we got we begin to run into what's called spoke angle issues um, and I will illustrate that here on my next picture um, this is the hub uh, this is the radius of the hub um, if the hub was if the hub was small the tangential spoke would run like this but instead now with this with this hub it must run like this and when it does you can see it doesn't enter the rim at a 90 degree angle or at an angle that's close to 90 degrees um, but if the if the wheel is drilled in a fairly conventional way and all rims have angled spokes they're pointed uh, laterally uh, toward um, different flanges of the hub uh, but otherwise they're more or less at 90 degrees so um, so what happens um, in this situation when let me create an enlarged drawing of that so uh, this is the rim and instead of the spoke arriving at the rim at, at 90 degrees like this uh, from a large from a large hub it arrives like this and the nipple uh, is sitting in a rim like this um, so now we have an angle uh, between the nipple and the spoke um, so uh, let me blow that up um, it looks like something like this so um, this is what I'm talking about when I'm referring to spoke angle issues and what happens in real life is the, the spoke of course goes inside the nipple and it's threaded and in these situations the spoke will be bent at the last thread uh, or at the bottom of the nipple which is sitting in the rim uh, like this uh, so this location um, becomes bent and thus becomes at risk of breaking and if it doesn't break here uh, then this spoke is applying a, a load because the spoke is stretched onto the nipple so it's trying to tilt the nipple uh, or twist the nipple uh, in its in its hole so um, the nipple applies uh, pressure uh, to the edges of its hole that wasn't meant to be applied and this can result in uh, cracking of the rim uh, so um, these are the issues that I will be discussing in the first part of this video which I know is destined to become viral um, uh, this must become a viral video for that small community of people who want to take apart a perfectly good Brompton uh, and equip it with a roll-off hub um, the other issue um, that I'll be discussing uh, is the anti-torque is the anti-torque mechanism of the roll-off hub uh, here you see the anti-torque plate um, a planetary gear set uh, such as this roll-off hub and just like the Sturmey Archer hub on the Brompton has to have um, some point that's anchored uh, to its machine uh, what gets anchored uh, varies between planetary gears um, between planetary gearboxes sometimes the Sun gear is anchored uh, to the machine other times the planet carrier is anchored uh, to the machine but something has to be anchored on the uh, Sturmey Archer hub uh, the anchoring happens through these special washers with hooks uh, that go on the flat areas uh, that go on the flat areas of the Sturmey Archer Archer here is the here is the Sturmey Archer uh, anchoring washer 
uh, there are two flat surfaces on this axle and then there is this washer which also has two flat surfaces and it has these hooks uh, that go into the dropout and it's this washer that anchors the axle uh, and acts as the anti-rotation uh, mechanism. Uh, it's very small and barely noticeable, but it's very important without it. Uh, you will be spinning the axle and your dropouts instead of propelling your bicycle forward. Um, on a roll-off hub, on a roll-off hub, there is a variety of anti-torque mechanisms uh, available. Uh, this particular one is called OEM2. And uh, if you're building a roll-off bicycle without a purpose-built roll-off bicycle frame, uh, you need to do some planning for the anti-torque mechanism. So later parts uh, of this video will deal uh, with this question. Um, a provision for the anti-torque uh, has to happen in the early stages as you're planning your project. Um, and I will show you how it's being done on uh, my bike. Uh, so keep watching. Um, it's uh, interesting and fun information. Uh, the um, complexities of the bicycle wheel are not to be underestimated. I learned most of what I know about bicycle wheels from this book by the late Jobs Brandt. Um, uh, but this book was written when um, they had a lot of spoke breakage issues due to poor quality of steel. Uh, those have been greatly improved and resolved. And unfortunately, uh, Brandt uh, doesn't provide a lot of information on small wheels. And so uh, things are being learned by a uh, hard experience. So uh, let's talk them over. Uh, this is the rear wheel. Uh, the rear wheel is more important, so, so I will start with it. Uh, this is a roll-off uh, speed hub. It's laced to, the, to a velocity dyad rim uh, with very short spokes. This wheel has a very simple lacing. It's just one cross. And uh, of course, the more crosses you have, uh, the higher the spoke angle, but also the more able the wheel uh, is to handle the torque uh, from pedaling and from the disc brake. Um, in their manual, uh, on page 55, uh, roll-off is uh, very specific uh, that on rims that are smaller than 24 inches, uh, only one cross uh, lacing can be used. Uh, and that's what I did. Currently there is a 13 tooth sprocket installed here. I started with a 15 tooth sprocket, but uh, currently running a 13 after some testing. Um, there are some issues with this wheel uh, worth discussing. Uh, the roll-off speed hub is wide uh, in um, this dimension and it also has a very large flange and we're installing it onto a 16-inch rim. Uh, so this is an extreme uh, wheel build in many ways uh, and there are issues with it. And the issues are uh, spoke angles. Uh, at the rim. Um, uh, there is an issue of um, spoke angle in this direction and the lateral spoke angle uh, in that direction. So uh, let's take a uh, closer look. The spoke angle usually discussed is an angle between uh, the tangent like this and uh, the spoke entering the rim. As you can see in this close-up, the spoke angle is quite acute. It's actually 9.4 degrees, as you can see on this um, sheet um, where I did calculation before building this rim. So this very short 120 millimeter spoke um, has a spoke entry angle of uh, 9.4 degrees when a spoke entry angle of less than 6 degrees is uh, recommended. There is a risk of spoke or rim failure. Uh, the spoke might break here at the end of the threads uh, and uh, the rim may crack uh, because of the excessive torque that is being placed um, on the head of the um, of the nipple 
inside inside the rim so uh, there's a risk of cracking on the opposite side here um, this spoke uh, would crack on this side so that's a concern let's look at how Brompton addressed this uh, this is a uh, Brompton Sturmy Archer wheel from a six-speed Brompton uh, it uses uh, the Brompton RIM 28 AGL and AGL stands for an angle drilled uh, and uh, here the spoke angle is very acute uh, it's a it's also a two cross wheel which also drives a uh, spoke angle um, to be high yet there is no bend uh, at the nipple and that's because of the special drilling of the special drilling that Brompton did uh, this is absolutely the correct uh, engineering solution uh, for this problem and uh, I uh, applaud Brompton on, on doing the right thing and creating a specially drilled rim. I wish a rim like this uh, was available uh, with 32 hole drilling. Um, if if my velocity dyad rim fails, uh, my plan is to build a new wheel with this um, rim. And if I was doing this again, uh, this is the rim I would recommend. This is made by uh, Sun. It's a uh, 32 uh, hole rim. It has um, fairly large spoke holes or nipple holes with stainless steel eyelets so so this is the proper rim for wheel strength it's also double walled um, and inside these eyelets i will use sapim polyax uh, 12 uh, millimeter uh, nipples uh, sapim polyax nipples allow a greater degree of rotation of the nipple uh, inside the hole without uh, distortion. In fact, um, they allow up to nine degrees. Uh, my wheel is 9.4 degrees and because this sun rim has a slightly larger effective rim diameter than the velocity dyad rim, I think I would hit exactly nine degrees and I would uh, have a nicer strong wheel. So if you are considering a project like this, a roll-off Brompton, uh, this is the rim I recommend over Velocity Dyad. Uh, it's made by Sun uh, in the UK. Uh, these are sold by uh, SJS Cycles, I noticed. In the United States, you can buy them on Amazon. And uh, as an additional bonus, it comes uh, anodized black, so it would uh, fit my uh, color scheme. Uh, so this sun rim, rim with stainless eyelets would be my preferred uh, rim now uh, with everything that I've learned uh, during this build. Uh, I will just mention that uh, it's drilled uh, for a uh, Schrader valve. Uh, so if you'd like to use a proper bicycle, press the valve. Uh, you'll need an adapter, but uh, metal and rubber adapters for this uh, are available so that your uh, press the valve stem doesn't bounce around in this uh, oversized uh, hole uh, that in my opinion is only appropriate on cars. The uh, last two issues to discuss are on uh, this side of the roll-off uh, speed hub. Uh, first the shifting mechanism. This uh, uses an exterior uh, box, a clicker box, uh, that turns um, this nut all of the shifting is inside uh, the hub so um, the twist shifter on the handlebar uh, just moves two cables there are no there are no indexing functions on the uh, handlebar the indexing indexing function is inside here um, which is great um, the anti-torque mechanism is very important when uh, building roll-off uh, bicycles. So this um, is the uh, roll-off OEM2 uh, anti-torque plate. 
and the stub axle is actually attached to it as well. Uh, you can see this uh, screw circle or bolt circle. Uh, this allows uh, you to rotate this plate depending on uh, how you would like uh, the shifter box to uh, be positioned on your bicycle and where the attachment for the OEM to uh, anti-rotation arm is. Uh, this needs to be considered be before uh, the build starts. It's uh, quite important. Uh, this, this is the roll-off uh, hub uh, manual and over here on page 30 uh, there are restrictions about the uh, positioning of uh, the OEM2 adapter uh, with respect to the uh, usual uh, attachment for it which is one of the IS uh, disc brake mountain holes. And Roloff makes a part for this called um, uh, monkey bone. And they actually make two parts. There's a monkey bone and there's a speed bone. Both of them serve to attach the OEM2 uh, to the uh, IS uh, brake mount, whether you have a disc brake or not. And so uh, there is a configuration that's not allowed. It's not allowed because uh, the forces on this adapter will work your axle out of your frame and your wheel will fall off and you'll crash. So nobody wants that. Uh, so we have to follow the guideline uh, that Roloff prescribes. And um, in this guideline, the screw to which the OEM uh, adapter is attached or the location on the speed bone or monkey bone where it's attached has to be behind the vertical line uh, behind the vertical line that runs through the dropout and uh, luckily on my build uh, the manufacturer of my rear triangle just happened to put the uh, brake caliper in this position um, often it's found of course uh, inside the triangle it's uh, more elegant uh, the brake is more protected it's closer to the center of gravity of the bike uh, so uh, there are many advantages to having the brake caliper uh, inside the triangle, but uh, you will not be able to use the OEM2 adapter. The most elegant way to mount the roll-off hub is the OEM adapter, uh, but that requires a um, special dropout. So your frame has to be built uh, by the frame builder for the roll-off hub. Uh, as opposed to a generic frame like this that can be used with uh, many different setups. If you decide to run a setup like this on a Brompton with uh, L-type mudguards that, that have a bolt which attaches the mudguard stays uh, fairly close to the uh, hub axle, uh, you will find that the OEM2 adapter uh, will interfere with that bolt. So there are two possible solutions there. The first one is to grind some metal off the adapter in this area. Uh, and that's what uh, I did. It's thinner here. I uh, made the decision that there is still plenty of metal here uh, for the anti-torque um, functionality. And it hasn't failed yet. And if it was to fail and I was starting to bend this plate uh, which is frankly unimaginable uh, considering the amount of steel that's here. Uh, but if it was, the this OEM2 plate is of course a very easy to uh, replace part. You just loosen these screws and you can put a new one in, uh, which is quite uh, inexpensive. An alternative would be to countersink the hole and use a flat head screw inside with the head inside the countersink on um, the frame. Uh, the dropout is quite thick there and the reason it's thick is uh, to take the torque loads from the disc brake. Uh, so a countersunk screw is an alternative to uh, grinding this off. You have to grind this off all the way to the top um, if you just create a um, depression or a hollow in this area for that screw, 
you will not be able to take the wheel off uh, without uh, removing the fender bolt and the fender bolt will be difficult to remove with a, a brake rotor still in place so so you'll you'll struggle uh, to take the wheel off if you have a flat tire so material has to come off on, along this entire length now a few words about the front wheel uh, definitely the front is a lot simpler than the rear uh, I managed uh, to build a three cross uh, wheel with these fairly short spokes and the velocity dyad uh, rim uh, this is a uh, Sun Deluxe um, generator hub which powers my headlight uh, and my uh, tail light uh, here are the electrical connectors uh, the three cross wheel um, is definitely uh, the best uh, possible here in terms of uh, taking the torque loads uh, from the disc brake and uh, the generator hub also produces torque loads as there is a resistance in it of course it takes energy to generate electricity so there is um, a permanent um, disadvantage where the generator hub is uh, slightly harder to turn takes about three watts so sun deluxe is uh, 100 millimeters wide uh, and it requires a 100 millimeter wide fork which the disc brake uh, also requires uh, sun deluxe only comes with a center lock adapter there are no bolted adapters uh, so uh, i'm using the shimano uh, rotor uh, with a with a uh, center lock adapter uh, and uh, because this wheel is narrower it's only 100 millimeters wide and because the uh, diameter of the generator hub is relatively small uh, I don't have as severe uh, spoke angle issues uh, as I do uh, with my uh, rear wheel so this was uh, the summary of the wheel building issues uh, that I've ran into while building my uh, disc brake velocity dyad roll-off speed hub and Sun Deluxe generator hub wheels for my uh, project Bromelov. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video, which will be about drivetrain.